loud. Okay, good. Hi there, and welcome to our half an hour or so chat. I am here with Susanna Jones. I'm Lori Morse, and we'll tell you a little bit about ourselves in just a minute. But why we're here together is that we want to support women, you who may be a leader or just want to better yourself in the world, in your family, in your circle, and have a greater impact and make your mark um, and feel awesome while you do it. We're going to talk about to do lists and all the things that feel overwhelming in our time together. Um, but our, our theme for our time together is managing life force to keep your own cup full. And so Suzanne and I are just going to have a conversation about that. The first, um, we're going to impart to you three things that we've noticed that are pitfalls about managing your energy. And then we're going to talk about the three things that we've noticed that help to kind of keep your cup full and add value to your to yourself and to all those that you are surrounded by that you care about. And then we'll talk about some of the obstacles that get in the way and how to overcome them. So stay with us to the very end because we do have a couple of free gifts for you. Um, but for now, let's just jump in. Hey, Susanna. Hi, Laurie. Thanks uh, for having me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is very fun. <laughs> so um, do you want to talk about the first pitfall or do you want me to? Wow, yeah, pitfalls as far as managing the life force to keep our cups full. Um, I, I only seem to really recognize those pitfalls when it seems like the bottom of the cup has just fallen out, <laughs> you know, and it's like, wait, <laughs> where did all the resources go that will help me uh, show up in my life to the best I can and be of service to the people around me? Yeah. So uh, it's in honor of those moments that have been challenging that um, uh, I think some some teaching and some helpful resources are are coming through for this conversation. So, so true. I don't, I don't, I don't think anybody can disagree <laughs> that we yeah. can out a full cup by having an empty cup. <laughs> right. yeah. And and in the yoga tradition, which is where I'm speaking from today, everything is regarded as divine. Even yeah. the challenges, even the suffering, has an element of divinity to it. Mm. Especially because it's that very suffering that often motivates us to incorporate what is a healing opposite to what we're going that. through. Yeah, I love that a lot. Yeah, and the tradition that I come from is is both Chinese medicine and intentional creativity. And where where in those traditions it's talked about that the, our medicine, our personal medicine, is inside the wound, and we actually mm. find our way to wholeness through our own wounds. So that's seems to be part and parcel of being a human being, doesn't it? <laughs> It does. Definitely to being an awake human being. And even if, even in the times when we're less awake, all those same resources are still there. That same medicine lies within us all. So it's awesome. <laughs> yeah. He's sitting sort of at the sacred center, like our sacred altar that is our heart that sort of navigates yeah. that stuff. Yeah, so definitely. Into connection with our heart is such a big thing. And I know in the yogic tradition, that's huge. Absolutely. And, you know, something, something that uh, clients often discuss with me is just this pervading sense of overwhelm that mm -hmm. I think is very common among women and particularly those who are in somewhat of a leadership position, either in an organization, in their community, or just in their, you know, household environment. Right. Um, this sense of an ever, an ever growing to do list. Mm -hmm. um, which can start feeling really heavy and it's easy. Um, it seems to kind of lose touch with oneself. And so as we were kind of discussing this a bit, Lori, we were discussing this life force mm -hmm. as being a very light quality that can sometimes just get like so tampered down by the weight of our duties and our obligations. Um, that some of the motivation for this conversation is just to create some more airspace for that life force to breathe and to express and to really propel us through everything we intend to do. Exactly. Right? This the idea life, that yeah. we're like a chalice where this light or life force is pouring in, mm -hmm. if we're intentionally or consciously open to that so that that energy can flow in through and around us and affect everything we do, which is very different than pounding away at our to-do list and racing for the finish line, you know? <laughs> right. Totally. In a way, you know, what we get to explore here is how to, how to kind of like 
poke some little holes, you know, for like air and light to filter in, so to speak, mm -hmm. into a heavy day of to do's, mm -hmm. you know, where we get this nice reset, um, where the life force feels very full, it feels very replenished, and uh, it, it does the work for us in a way. <laughs> it's true. And I think that's the thing that our mind has a hard time grasping, maybe, is that it, it isn't all up to the mind to, to make sure everything is together <laughs> and mm. done. And, uh, and, and if we include the, our divinity, if we include that life force, which has a nature of light and love to it, then it changes the way things unfold yeah. you know, from this moment forward and in the afternoon and tomorrow morning and tonight at dinner and all the things that have to happen. Totally. And feel heavy and overwhelming. Yeah. yeah. And, and call it a gift or a curse um, when something like this happens, when that sense of overwhelm gets so intense that there's a, there's like a stalling that happens because we literally can't go on anymore, mm -hmm. you know, and some people may describe this as burnout or as like decision fatigue or decision paralysis or something where we are literally stopped in our tracks almost against our will, <laughs> you know? It's like our spirit or our soul says, okay, we need to reset here. Time out. Yeah. Yeah. I know. yeah. That's a good and, and, and when I've experienced that before, it's, uh, it's dissatisfying in a way because I didn't choose it. it I mean, in a conscious way, I didn't choose it, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so maybe there's another way to kind of approach this thing where we are choosing to have more times of rest and reset where the paralysis or the fatigue or the exhaustion doesn't make that happen for us. Yeah, yeah that's so good. I, I, yeah, for sure. I couldn't agree more. Sometimes I've thought of this in my own life because I think we've all had these moments where we drop <laughs> because we're, we're, you know, we're overwhelmed or overworked or whatever, fatigued. Um, and, and I've thought in the past about music, you know, because culturally it's so interesting. Our, our culture is really pro productivity and not so pro rest mm. right like it's i don't know we have weird values around that like it's it, it's we're seem, it seems lazy if we take a rest or if we're not producing all the time then you know we're not good enough all these things that kind of float through the airwaves in, in terms of cultural beliefs mm -hmm. and system, right? Totally. But I've thought about music, you know, I mean, I, I don't know hardly anybody who doesn't love music and there is no music without notes and rests, right? Like it's that dance between the, the sound and the not sound. And I think that's called notes and rests in music. But I, I thought, well, okay, that's something to practice, you know? <laughs> yes, that is a gorgeous example. Yeah. Yeah. I learned from one of my yoga and Ayurveda teachers, the value of pausing between practices. Like say you're doing a 60 minute asana and pranayama practice using postures and the breath mm -hmm. to pause between each part of that gives a chance for the mind and body to just kind of reflect and to integrate what it's just done before moving on to the next thing. Mm -hmm. So just like those little beats and rests and music. Exactly. It's beautiful. Exactly. Yeah. And that, you know, if our, if our life is a canvas or if our life is a, a music or a symphony and, or if our life is an ever unfolding um, asana practice, mm -hmm. then we have to include those, those beats and those rests as regular parts of our day. It's like a, a tapestry we have to weave at the conscious level, I think. Totally. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So fear. And, and then there's this idea of fear of not getting the job done. If like, if we don't push, if we're, if we're not rowing our boat upstream, yeah. <laughs> and, and overworking, which is what causes the overwork and the overwork. Totally. And, and, and then know, the, go ahead. Oh, I just get so excited on the subject. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and, yeah. and that all seems to apply so much to, to the work life that we all live in our own ways. And mm -hmm. then, but it's like, then when work is over, there seems to be this like fear of missing out being a very pervasive thing, yeah. you know, for those who are very social, there's, you know, always kind of an invitation for something else coming up, another way to be present in the life of another, you know, and um, I, I think that sometimes, you know, there's a lot of fear-based decision-making about what we commit to. I think that's very common. And probably a lot of the times that's how we make some of our decisions or a lot yeah. of our decisions. Yeah. And the idea, at least in this broad brushstroke conversation, is to just bring some conscious awareness to that so that we can 
take a pause, like you just said, and, and just check in. Is this really something that is serving for all involved or am I, am I just going with FOMO? <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> Who's making this decision really? <laughs> yes. What's driving it? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. I've been really indulging in the uh, the sense of JOMO, which is the joy of missing out. Oh, I love that. I've never heard that. Yeah. That. Yeah. I love JOMO. that, right? Like, JOMO, like usually like, like in my like, Oh, yeah. that's heaven, this free extra time. Yeah. Like, I'm happy to miss out. <laughs> yes, honestly, except for when I'm hosting a party or something, um, I, I love a canceled plan. I'm like, yeah. oh, free time, you yeah. know? Probably a lot of people listening with us would feel the same way. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay if you feel that way too. <laughs> yeah. And then there's this idea of, of um, uh, how did we say that? Too many things that need our attention, which mm. is kind of in the same vein of fear of missing out. So there's, there's like a big old smorgasbord of options. And even if every, it, we all know, because most of us have probably been to a buffet, we can't possibly eat every single thing on the buffet. We have to be discerning and choose you know, what's going to work in our digestive system, what's going to fill our tummy for that moment, you know, all that stuff. So it's kind of the same idea. The omnivore's dilemma, right? Yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. exactly. <laughs> First world problems. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a problem. So, <laughs> yeah. And then you had also mentioned this idea of when that happens, there's just, so, there's, it's such a heightened sense of sensory input, like, like we're being flooded, I guess, with, mm -hmm. with sensory input. And it's, it's, mm -hmm becomes hard to navigate and find our center yeah. so we even know how to say yes to the yes things and no to the no things. Yeah, I find that, yeah, there's just, there's so much stuff that commands our attention, you know, from, you know, technology that we may choose because it brings us such benefit in one area of our lives that, you know, is really, the, the tech is really designed for us to stay in it for as long as possible, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, and, and there's a point at which that's really helpful. And there's a point at which it becomes less helpful, you know, right. There's a line. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I, I think, you know, the senses really, really dictate in a way how our organs are functioning, how our mood is, how our rhythms are, our sleep, et cetera, you know? And so something I found really, uh, well, we'll get into our little value section here momentarily, <laughs> but, but just, just recognizing, um, recognizing all of the sensory input that goes into a day and how each bit of sensory information requires a little bit of life force to process. Yes. Yes. That's a, that's a great point. And sometimes we don't, we're not consciously aware of that until we become consciously aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so true. And then this idea that our last pitfall that we've um, noticed is this idea that we leave ourselves last uh, mm -hmm. and and the tendency as women in particular to um, to be pl pleasers mm -hmm. to some degree so which ends up leaving ourselves last because there's so many things to do and tend to right. so that's a tough one it is a tough one and um, it there's a <laughs> There's a strikingly similar solution, at least in the in the yogic worldview, where opposites heal. You know that would be to put self first. Right. <laughs> you right. know, in a number of ways. So maybe this helps us segue into our into our value. Yeah. Should we go into our value section? Yeah. There's there's a lot of value. Can you tell us um, just your background and a little just a little bit oh. more about yourself? So we before we give you some value and some meat on the bone to chew. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> totally. Which case we'll talk about beans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So I am a yoga educator of 10 years and um, I now work with one-on-one -on -one clients as a certified yoga therapist at a private practice in downtown called Urban Yogi. And nice. Yeah, so that's where that's where I'm coming from. I just love getting to work with one person at a time and to just kind of open up to all the wisdom and all the perspectives and all the techniques that w that exist within yoga to just help a person right with right where they're at with where they want to go and how they are through like a few simple practices and helpful perspectives. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. I love that. <laughs> Thank you. I love it too. <laughs> yeah. And um, and my focus is is 
well, I've been a practitioner of Chinese medicine for 25 years. And about 13 or 14 years ago, I started bringing creativity into the mix specifically for healing. It's, it's a magical healing element and it has a lot of the same researched benefits as meditation does. And um, so I love that part. And I've, last year I wrote a book called Reverse Heart Disease Naturally, uh, primarily because spirit told me to write a book on the heart. <laughs> and I said, and I said, okay, I will do that. And, um, and it isn't, it's, it's, it's also because women, so many women are passing away of heart problems and that's like not okay. So in short, it, my work now is working with women individually to find her personal medicine in her wounds and, mm -hmm. and find her way through to that wholeness. And that's on a mental, emotional level, physical level, or spiritual level. So uh, while our work is somewhat parallel, it's also different, which is what I love about um, having these conversations with you. <laughs> yes, likewise. Yeah. And yeah. as like, where my scope of practice ends, yours begins and vice versa, maybe, you know, it's wonderful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, and we'll talk about this as one of the, t one of the values that we're going to bring, but using our inner um, guidance to, to know what is the right thing and when, because there's so many things to choose from, but our body's wisdom is just so, it's so vast and it's so huge. And, it, and when we, practice tapping into that it's mm -hmm. infallible really yeah yeah um, yeah i love this topic Lori. <laughs> i know i do too should we should we talk about that the the gps to start there well yeah go for it oh well okay <laughs> you know it was a it was probably 20 years ago and i don't even remember if this just dropped in because that happens a lot but the the practice i started is using my body as the sort of like a gps mm -hmm. and feeling into whenever i had to make a decision and i started this might sound silly but i started with like what underwear should i wear today which color or which clothes should i wear i would stand in front just as a practice like a muscle building thing because <laughs> there was no catastrophic outcome to which underwear i wore for the day you know <laughs> so and the idea is to is to tap in and and feel into whatever the decision is one way or the other and there's generally a, a feel and you have to stay in your body which is a good practice anyway because most women like to stay in their mind which cuts off so much of the of the cellular intelligence and the divine wisdom that is literally in every single cell of our body and they're in the trillions by the way it's a huge it's a huge vast access of, of, of intelligence and wisdom. So anyway, when you're making a decision, there's either a feeling of lightness or tightness around the decision. And that feeling of lightness, when I go with that, it has never ever, um, it has been only good. And when I talk myself out of it and go with something that feels more tight, that's usually a mental thing that happens, um, then I end up paying <laughs> in the end. So, um, you you were saying something about the light tight thing earlier so if, if yeah you know. well yeah as i was kind of meditating on this concept you know it it just dawned on me that um in yoga such a such a big idea is is adding consciousness to what had been previously unconscious or subconscious you know and so using this metaphor for light it's like it's where you know our our conscious decisions are in a way and, and opening up our awareness to understanding how we're living life, how it is that we are getting through this to-do list, not what we're doing, but how we're doing things is yeah. very illuminating. Yeah. And sometimes it can be a lot to examine that oneself, which is why it's helpful to have a supportive guide with you along the way. Um, but there is this concept of just bringing light to which had been previously in darkness, you know? And so if there's a way of getting through the to-do list that is actually increasing tightness and tension and, you know, dis-ease of any kind, um, that inquiring within with such a simple question as when faced with the decision, does this feel light or does it feel tight? Mm -hmm. Does saying yes to this feel enlightening? Does it feel the opposite, you know? And mm -hmm. so, and so but I love, I love your example of like, you know, choosing which undergarments to wear in a day because it's, it's not a, like yeah. the world will not end, you know, it's, right. like, it's like a safe place to start flexing that muscle, as you said, but right. it really builds this, this sense of trust in oneself to say like, actually it's okay. It's safe for me to make a decision based on how it feels in my body 
And what feels light is going to have a more life-giving effect to it because the life force is light. (laughs) It's not heavy. It's not light. Yeah, it's freeing. It's liberating. Right. And there's no, there's an ease to it versus a tenseness to it. So those are uh, two other words we could use instead of light or tight. Yeah. And every woman that that I talk to, what's that? I like it because it rhymes, you know? (laughs) I know, right. Light or tight. Easy, easy to access. Every woman I've ever talked to when I ask them what they want, you know, uh, un- unpeeling all the things that they think they want that are more external. What they really want is this sense of ease and peace, mm-hmm. like from the inside out. And so this is one of the ways to start um, discovering like from the inside out what, how that e- feeling of ease feels. Because when we look at our to- to-do list, we don't feel ease. We, mm-hmm. we usually feel tension. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, just practicing with things. I- if one has a decision to make, mm-hmm. then imagine you're doing the decision one way and there will be a feeling in your body and then imagine it doing it the other way and there will be a feeling in your body and go with the one that's light. And yeah. if that, if this idea is really a little scary or something then just pick like the first half of the day on Saturday like when errands to run first or something like that again not catastrophic you're not making major business decisions or family decisions initially you're just trying to discover how it feels in your body um, yeah. to, to actually have guidance come come forward for you because that's really yeah. what it is and and as I'm hearing you say this it makes me realize that we we probably actually do this more often than we realize we probably are making, you know, decisions that feel light yes. um, often and bringing our conscious awareness to that, again, seems to build this trust in oneself where it's like, I make really good decisions for myself. And that's an inc- a very empowering thing to say, like, I stand by my decisions. <laughs> I, that's a beautiful thing to bring in. And uh, the only time I notice when that's not as true is when we're only in our head, which tends to happen. Um, yeah. Or if we second guess our feeling, our gut, the guidance, you know, so, yeah. but you're right. Definitely. I mean, anybody who's lived several decades, which probably most of the people on this, uh, who would be listening to this has, you can look back and there have been way more times that you've listened to your inner wisdom, your inner knowing, and, and it has served you well. So congratulating yourself and celebrating that is a really good idea. Yeah, definitely. (laughs) You already know how to do this really well. We're just up-leveling our conscious awareness to it and we're bringing it into the pockets of our life that could probably use it. Right. Yeah. Right. And with regard to the, the sensory information, the influx of that, you know, we all might kind of, different people might have more, more sensory input flowing into their life than others, you know, depending on what you do. Um, but using this kind of, does it feel light? Does it feel tight inquiry in that, you know, if you happen to get, um, riled up listening to the radio while stuck in traffic one day, it's like, well, does the radio even need to be on right now? Right. Or, or, or did I, or is it just a habitual thing? Action you know? and something yeah. else be more serving. Yeah, exactly. right, exactly. Because you know, sometimes there's just this. Uh, it's just a. It's a thing we just do so regularly that like the sound is always on. You know, the music is always on when we're practicing yoga, for instance. When maybe a silent drive home, maybe a yoga practice in quiet. Maybe mm-hmm. that would just help to settle and help the body recharge its vital resources that much more easily because yeah. all that sensory stuff, it takes info to process. Yeah. Energy to process rather. I love it. I love it. Well, maybe we should then next talk about um, the way we can run energy and hold our energy in order to keep a stronger, not only body and mind, but field. Yes. You know, like we, if you, can't see my arms but if you put your arms out to your side the tips of your fingers is and all the way around like an oval shaped around your body is said to be where the where our field is and I mean it can expand much farther than that but in general just for the sake of our conversation the idea is that we want to fill our field with as much life force by intention I personally see that life force as light around me in through and you know all the way in me and around me and i i have found as a very sensitive person because you just mentioned this a minute ago that's helpful for the barrage of sensory input and people's energy and toxic situations around us it helps keep me 
it helps me stay centered and stay with myself instead of leaving myself and um or being overwhelmed by the energy yes definitely yeah, yeah. Yeah, you mentioned, and then, you mentioned a nice way of kind of running that energy in a morning shower, and I love that because yeah. it fit in so nicely to what one might already be doing in a day. <laughs> exactly. So what what Suzanne is talking about is this idea of running energy where we. Um, so let's let's just run through it real quick, and then maybe you can tell them about the shower idea. <laughs> oh, okay. Because our whole thing, by the way, you guys, is to is to help you move yourself into these higher states of being without adding another thing to your to-do list, right? Like we're very attentive to that for you. <laughs> Mainly because we are have to do that for ourselves too. <laughs> and I'm a big advocate for doing less and being more. And exactly, exactly. How do, and then how do you say that? I love how you say it. And feeling awesome. <laughs> and feeling awesome. And feeling awesome. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's that. Yeah. <laughs> So this idea of running energy inside your field is where you have your feet um, planted on the earth, on the ground, where, you know, whether you're inside or outside, and that you're connecting from the bottoms of your feet. That's the, the lowermost point in Chinese medicine. It's on the kidney channel and it's called kidney one. And it reaches, its energy can reach by our intention all the way down into the core of mother earth. Like mother earth has her own heart, her own womb, her own core, and it's alive and it's filled with love and it's vital and that, and we're connected to that. So we can actually take an inhale and breathe her energy up and pull it in through our feet and up our legs and up our entire central core. You can have, you can see it as a very, um, as a, as a pillar almost in the center of your body, if you'd like to do that and bring it all the way up through your throat and your head and out the top of your head and intend or imagine, you don't have to see this if you're not a person who sees things visually necessarily in these ways, but intend it, that the energy go all the way up into the cosmic realms, into the benevolent universe as far as it can reach. And then once, that's a long inhale based on everything. <laughs> When you do it on your own, you'll know you'll know it, that it doesn't take that long. But anyway, you're <laughs> inhaling from the core all the way up, all the way up, intending that it hook in or touch and reach into the cosmic realms. And then on your exhale, imagine that there's like a waterfall of light that's pouring down through the top of your head, flushing through your entire body, through your central core, down your legs, and moving back out again and reaching into the core of Mother Earth. And when you do that for several breaths and you're just running the energy of Earth and the heavens, as it's said in Chinese medicine, we're actually um, considered to be, in Chinese medicine they call it, we're between heaven and Earth. So as a human being, we're held by Earth and we're held by the, the, the high, the the high realms, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So running energy between that causes us to have a center of uh, strength and connection that is really hard to get in another way. So the best I can say is to play with this throughout your days. And Susanna, why don't you tell them our brilliant idea of the shower? <laughs> Well, you know, just to incorporate these little kind of resets, you know, that make a, a very normal day of life kind of extraordinary um, and more life giving than not, you know, to incorporate such a practice into something as simple as taking a shower, you know, um, where, you know, you can experience that kind of down ray of like wonderful energy from all the elements just washing over your skin. Um, and with any kind of visualization between what resides above and what resides below, what resides right within at the center of the heart, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. might just be it's such a simple act of devotion to the life force, mm -hmm. you know, and as you go about perhaps the other very normal cleansing rituals of the day, brushing the teeth, for instance, combing the hair, like, how would you brush the teeth of a goddess? Mm, mm. How would you comb the hair of a goddess? Mm. You know? And just knowing that the energy of the goddess is beating your heart and pumping. Yes. Like moving through every cell of your being right now. Totally. Yeah. Um, and hmm, to me, it, it almost serves as a, as a form of bhakti yoga, which is the devotional yoga. You know, it's really devoting, devoting to the 
the one within. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I love that word so much, Susanna, devotion, because honestly, it does take our conscious devotion to like bring union between our humanity and our divinity. Yeah. And yeah. to then take it out into the world in effective and impactful ways that that don't don't leave us empty that leave our cup more full than not yeah That's and really and cool. and totally it is super powerful and you know for anyone who is is curious enough to try that you know to approach it with some curiosity and to see like well when i comb my hair like i would comb the hair of a goddess how does it make me feel mm -hmm. does it make me feel more more light does it make me feel more free and if so, you can run with that forever. You don't have to listen to another conversation about it. It's yours to keep, you know? Exactly. exactly. I love that. It's so, great. so resourceful. Yes. <laughs> it's so, yeah. And, I, and I, I am a tea drinker, so I have to use the bathroom a lot throughout the day. So I literally run energy and I open my field when I use the bathroom because it's just a, an easy association for me. You know, I, I don't have to think about what I'm worried about. I can do this energy work in that, in those few moments. And then it, there's less time throughout the day mm -hmm. where I forget and it kind of strings together more connection than not. And yes. Even, yeah. even the bathroom time is such, is such a divine exercise. Um, one of my great teachers, Indu Aurora, she, she would always mention in these long trainings and stuff, you know, that anytime you need to get up and use the bathroom, like go pee, like go, don't suffer, don't hold it in because it nourishes the body on its way out. Yeah. Like if you've ever like really had to pee, I mean, even pee is divine in this system. Yeah. Right. Oh, Everything is divine. But like, if you've ever felt so good after you peed, right. That is so good for you. Like to really like to, and it doesn't have to be this long drawn out thing, but just mm -hmm. to appreciate the subtle nourishment of how good that feels to and have peace. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so like good. don't, don't cheat yourself on that. Get that. <laughs> right. And then use the time in ways that we're talking about if this resonates with you, because why not? What else are you doing except right? For <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and what was the other thing um, that we wanted to gift? Mm. Them? We did the discernment, the light and the tight. Oh, yes. Um, oh, we were going to go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I just, I love this, this kind of ritual that we're talking about. It just like checking in with how the body feels about what it is we're doing and how we're doing it, because it really lets the body have a say, yeah. because how much, how much would we be able to get done without this body? Yes. You know, if, if one is the divine needs a body, you know, <laughs> to, to do work in this world it, it has to come through a body and, and it has to come through one that's consciously aware. And that's what all of us are doing is increasing our levels of consciousness day in and day out. Yeah. yeah. So um, <laughs> when I was doing research for the heart health book, one of the things I learned is that we have over, I mean, some people say 50 trillion, but the numbers I found were 37.2 trillion cells. And inside every single cell is an is our 37.2 trillion atoms and in every single atom is is the spark of light or divinity that we are this the intelligence the cellular intelligence that holds our blueprint for health for wholeness for abundance for expression for love and it but it's up to us to actually activate and awaken that energy in us and these are just a few of the things that we're offering for you to play with to do exactly that yeah Love that. yeah good stuff <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so the pitfalls that we have mm. have discovered and there's the things that we're sharing with you in our discoveries are not it's not limited to this these things we're just kind of doing a highlighting yeah number in our short time together so mm -hmm. uh, yeah so what would you say is your number one pitfall that that you hmm. you know i there's just such a there's such a, a learning curve when we're trying to do something different or it's trying to do something differently mm -hmm. um that can be frustrating for people who are very performance driven, you know, people who really strive for a level of optimization in their life. It can be downright discouraging for something to feel kind of clunky or awkward when it's really intended to help you feel quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
Yeah, I think to uh, kind of plan into the process for it, things to feel a little uncomfortable at first. Yeah, um, good advice. Yeah. That, like that's just part of the beginner's mind thing. Yes. Like, yeah. 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 Got it. And, and knowing also that, that the mind will intervene, you know, the mind is like a really good soldier and it mm -hmm. has been following the same set of orders, presumably for a long time. And so to reorient, you know, um, the inner resources to start going in a new way, it, it probably will just take some repetition. And that's where some things are. Yeah, repetition yeah. is key. It teaches right. the mind when something new comes on board. Mm -hmm. The mind wants to tend to resist or rebel yeah. because in her way of viewing you and mm -hmm. your life, you know, she's all about keeping you safe and protected. And if something new is coming on board, she doesn't know if that's going to be safe. Right. But the repetition helps her learn that it's perfectly safe, that breathing is an okay thing, that light energy is not, you know, is, is more in service of us than she could ever even realize. And it tends to just um, help her build trust and confidence that you know the high the heart does know what she's doing if we have access to our divinity through this portal through this sacred altar that is our heart mm -hmm. um, that aspect of our being will not lead us astray it will only lead us to that which is serving and good yeah. and the mind needs to understand and learn and trust that really yes yeah. right it will protest, you know, so to expect that so. <laughs> and, and to, and to retain it to like, what is your intention, you know, and to maybe even remind yourself of your intention a couple, you know, once every couple hours, <laughs> if that's I'm what it takes. Writing things down. I, I, it's so unfathomable to me. Like I'll think in a moment's time, oh, that's so good. Like maybe I've just read something. I'm going to do that. That's, that makes perfect sense. And I know this is going to be helpful. And I'll step away and not two seconds later, I, will, I won't even remember what I just thought was such a good idea, you know, so because the mind starts getting, yep. so I have to write things down, put stickies on my mirror, you know, be, <laughs> be regularly reminding of, you yeah. know, of the thing that I'm tending to, yeah. to, to be different. Yeah. Totally. Just to tenderize the mind that would be like, I don't know, you know, yeah. <laughs> build, it up, build up its tolerance for doing this a different way. Exactly. Yeah. And um, I can't remember what you just said, but it made me think, I, I've also learned over time that if I'm kind to my mind, she'll be kind back. Like if mm -hmm. I'm, you know, a lot of us were taught to sort of you know, be like a slave driver and crack the whip and, you know, it doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're willing to, and that doesn't work. Yeah, you've tried yeah. to, it doesn't work. I mean, it might for a short period of time, but it's not long lasting. And what we're looking for is deep impact with, with lasting results, right? Yeah. So that your, yeah. your lives are up leveled and, and shifted, you know, in, in better and better ways. Yeah. 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 Let's do that. Let's do it that way. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> um, yeah. So, oh, we, we had also talked about this idea that, you know, in, in the idea of keeping our cup full, um, that, you know, there's not, I don't know a spiritual tradition that doesn't talk about how important that is. Right. Like, it, we, if we give from the overflow, there, there is, the impact is way different than if we're giving from sort of a bottom of the barrel place. Yeah. Um, and you had had that really great example of, you know, put your own oxygen mask on first <laughs> right. in the airplane, you know, like it's a common um, reference, but it's so true. Right. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really, it's safer to do that. We can be more effective when we are ourselves cared for and then showing up to help out another person. It really, it can't, it's, it's just unsustainable to do it the other way around, you know, <laughs> but we're always at choice about doing it differently. We can always change our mind. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Right. And, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so what else was our, um, let's see, we had, oh, we wanted to, Oh, the other thing was time, time and energy, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, you know, like a, nice, a nice concept of time for us to work with. Right. Because most of us feel like there's this much to do and we have this much time. <laughs> so um, there's this idea of circular time and it's called, in some circles, it's called Einstein time. So we, we relate to time generally until we consider it otherwise in a linear way, mm -hmm. which is this idea we have this much to do and this much time. So there's not enough time for certain things, right? Yeah. But if we 
if we are willing to open ourselves and our awareness and our, our perspective up, our point of view up, mm -hmm. where time is a circular um, experience and it, it involves our entire field, which is why there's value in keeping your field open and full. Yeah. Actually, some spiritual, I, well, a lot of spiritual traditions talk about our field is like our spiritual clothing. So most of us wouldn't consider going out into the elements without clothes on. So every morning we put our clothes on like that's a ritual. And filling our field with light or love is also a ritual. It's, it's, a, it's our spiritual clothing, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So if we have that open and we're in our connected place and we, we see our to-do list and we start offering the items on our to-do list, you know, the things that are important that must be done to our higher wisdom in, the, in this idea that we're putting it in this circular sort of field that's connected to the quantum field, mm -hmm. then my personal experience is that the, the things that have to be done get done and they're fed back to me in perfect ways in perfect timing with perfect people involved. And it's a, it's a way more enjoyable way to get my things on my to-do list done. Mm -hmm. My mind knows there's always the to-do list. It's not going anywhere. So I can reference that. But if you're willing to play with this a little bit mm -hmm. and build the muscle for it, it can serve you in every area of your life for the rest of your life. Yeah. And, and you will learn that you're no longer a victim of time mm -hmm. as much as you're in a relationship with time and time is here to serve you or to serve yeah. us. And that's a totally different shift on what, you know, having enough time. Totally. So. I love that. It really seems to lend itself to longevity in that which one aspires to do. Longevity in their position, longevity as a leader, longevity mm -hmm. in your family, in your health, you know, it's, as it's opposed to like burnout. <laughs> trying to get the job done like yeah. well, but isn't the job just to be spread out over a long 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 period of time where you're just right. consistently meeting it day by day doing what's yours to do and then resting gotta get the rest exactly good point <laughs> yeah there's there's not i mean we are the mind would have us believe that there's always these like end points and then we'll be good you know, like if we cross this finish line, if we get this project done, if we do this thing, if we get our family, if our, we get our child through this thing, whatever the thing yeah. is. Um, it's a trick. <laughs> trick, right? It's so yeah. seductive because on the other, after that, there's the next thing. So what you just said is so brilliant because it, it gives us this, um, this relaxation into the long game. <sighs> yeah. Be a sea turtle. Yeah. It's crazy. And they have the slowest rate of respiration mm -hmm. of any creature on the planet. Wow. So you can maybe draw some inferences there. Yeah. yeah. Breathe easy. You know, the hints are all around us, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. <They're everywhere>. Totally. <laughs> Nature. Nature holds the key. Whew. Exactly. Amazing. So we would love, do you want to tell them about the inquire, inquiry that we're inviting them into? Or do you want me to? The inquiry. The inquiry was as far as how to partake in our resources and services. As yeah, and be, but before that, to maybe post in the comments one or two mm -hmm. things yes. that um, that you you know that you would do to reinforce putting yourself first. Mm -hmm. And when we participate in community like this, we learn from each other. So, you know, you you might pick up something that someone else missed in, in just this short conversation. And, and if it speaks to you, then um, we would love to witness you posting it and hold space for you to actually access using that particular tool to, to yeah. keep yourself, you know, to keep your full cup full. Yes. Keeping, I love that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And as a, as a personal inquiry, after we sign off here, feel free to take about a minute to yourself with eyes closed or just in a restful position, inviting in a very gentle recall of what has stuck with you from this time, what has felt most meaningful to you, knowing that that'll just be like a little gem of wisdom that has kind of stayed in the filter of the mind, you know? And if, if, if only one or two things really sticks from this conversation, blessed be, and the rest of it can just wash through you, yeah? Yeah, or be available for another time in your field because it all lives there. Yeah. Yes. That is such great a great um, touchstone. <laughs> have yeah to have us all do. I'll do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. So um, so how can they? How can our beloveds learn more about you, Susanna? Oh, let's see. Well, I have lots of information available on my website, which I'll post in the comments. UrbanYogiSD.com. 
And um, what I'd love to offer people who have stuck with us for this time is a free call, like a free 20 minute phone consultation for anyone who is looking for some ongoing support in approaching their daily life in perhaps a different way to yield a different result than perhaps you've had before, or for people who are wanting to integrate um, a healing routine with very specific practices that are intended for you, that are respective of any health issues at play, and that can just help to kind of introduce the healing opposites that will tend your life force and keep your cup full for the long game. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> cool. And how about yeah. you? Yeah. So um, what I would like to offer you for s staying with us this long is a complimentary copy of my book. It would be in an electronic format, so I could deliver it to you by email. So I'll post the link on how to get that. Um, when you read through it, I, I, I just want to have you know that whether or not you have any symptoms of heart disease, that is not the point, because the material in the book, not only is it for healing the heart, it's for healing anything in the body, really. Um, and it's also for emotional, any of the, like, we don't realize how much emotional tension we hold in our heart in the form of frustrations or betrayals or grief or sadness, things that didn't work out in our life, even from a long time ago. So I just want to invite you to see if the way this, this particular path unfolds in terms of the chapters in the book, if it speaks to you, then, um, then I have an, also a, a complimentary heart health assessment that is available to you. So between the both of us, we have a lot of support for you and we would encourage you to reach out and, um, and, go with the lighter tight, <laughs> do, do what is really calling you from your heart and from your soul as your next best steps. At the very least, um, let us witness you in the comments and um, optimally reach out in, in the links that we provide. Wonderful. Really. And we believe in you and we believe you can do it. We, there's no question. There's so much support on, in terms of the light on the planet right now that it is time. And if you're being called, it's, it's a lot more gentle to say yes the first time you hear the call than to wait. <laughs> um, <Amen. laughs> so we look forward to seeing you again soon. Uh, thank you. Namaste. Namaste. Yes, ma'am.